mentioned earlier, you know, not to throw yourself off a, a high building. I'm not going to do that because I think, again, there's a position for everything here. But I do think if you look at it in terms of the journey that we're on, if you go back, I actually kind of start down here so I can remember X.25 looking around the room. <laughs> Um, but, you know, you kind of go through all of the, the various iterations that we've been through. And I don't think, and certainly the view is, that this isn't the end destination at all. It's just another one of those use cases, another capability that, let's say, the virtualization of technologies has brought to bear that are now, you know, vendors have seen as an opportunity. Enterprises are beginning to see as something that they can save money with and become maybe more agile, more flexible. But I don't think it's going to be suddenly you stop doing MPLS and everybody jumps over to SD-WAN. I don't think that's going to happen. I think it will be one of those kind of use cases that builds on typically what's there. Because if you look at it, SD-WAN, there isn't, there isn't that much by way of new technology there. It builds on what's already there. It builds on the existing underlay. It builds on all the existing protocols that are there. There are just some new capabilities and features at the CPE level. And there's a centralized kind of policy control engine. Now, I'm a pretty simple guy. That's pretty much it. You know, the rest of the underlay network, you know, the IP, MPLS, all of the things that, you know, you guys have built out and deployed are still absolutely required. This is a use case that builds on top of it. And for some enterprises and for some organizations, they'll start to push and start to kick and start to shout and to scream for this. But others will continue to use your current you know, VPN service because, again, if you want you know, kind of control of QAS, you want control of an SLA, then, again, that is crucial to some and that will maintain itself. But I think it's that interesting stat about how much traffic that a typical enterprise generates is, you know, let's say, valid to go across the VPN. Um, you know, the 70% thing about most is going out to the internet which suggests it doesn't need you know, kind, of, you know, kind of quality treatment. Um, what this potentially does, it gives you a gateway to multiple choices at the branch level to say, actually, the, good tra or the kind of high demand traffic or high intensity traffic still goes via the VPN. You know, Gainham, who's you know, kind of looking at Tinder or looking at YouTube or whatever, and that can go out onto the internet. That doesn't need any special treatment. Um, so that's the kind of the, you know, the corollary or the value that's being positioned. You know, to, a, uh, to an end enterprise. But I think it's just another one of those kind of stepping stones. Because it's not the end destination. It's not going to suddenly stop MPLS in its tracks and suddenly everybody sort of throw out what you've done and start it. They're, they're, you know, certain vendors are beginning to say the death of MPLS. MPLS is dead. It's gone. Forget it. Now, you'll know, excuse my language, but that is kind of bullshit. Yeah? Because that you know, has no view in reality of the investments, the services, the deployments, the skills, that you know, the carriers and other you know, organizations have built up over many years. So as ever, back to my point, you see hype, you see overstatements. I think there's a need as ever for some pragmatic reality. And to me, it's another one of those you know, kind of stepping stones. It's of interest, and I don't think people can ignore it, but I don't think it's something that's suddenly going to stop everything else in its track either. Um, and we'll see. See if I'm right, maybe 12 months from now. We'll see if I'm right. Um, so from an enterprise side, guys, again, I won't spend too much time on this. These, again, these are pretty obvious. This is, again, a PWC slide. Um, but if you look at what you know, most enterprises are looking at from the WAN, and this is, again, part of the research that the guys at PWC came up with, I don't think there's any surprise here. It's kind of, yeah, I want to sort this out. Yeah, yeah, get it, get it. The good thing is, of course, it's got their name on it. It's not us saying this. It's them and their research that kind of came out with this. But... Reducing, you know, reduction of costs, improvement of overall agility, driving efficiency with automation, and easy migration to cloud apps. That's what's on the mind, according to PwC, of enterprise organizations that are looking at this or looking at the general direction of, you know, kind of travel for them. Um, most of them, and I hear this, you know, the wonderful term of digital transformation of business. Um, and I think, you know, that everybody's talking about that, of course. It depends upon how quickly, how, you know, how you know, active people are in doing that. But of course, a number of organizations are beginning to look at how they adopt um, things like automation technologies. Of course, the cloud, as mentioned earlier. Taxi driver knew all about that. And of course, it has to be at a, an overall cost reduction. So when, you know, when vendors and others start to talk to enterprises about there's a heap load of money to be saved here, that's why suddenly this has come out of the blocks and has gathered attention. 
Because to me, if you think of it, what is SD-WAN ultimately? It's a, it's a subset use case of, you could argue, either software-defined networking or network functions virtualization or probably little bits of both. Again, it's because the definitions are relatively loose, but you see elements of both, you know, kind of the de-layering and the kind of separation of control plane that SDN kind of positions itself as mostly in the data center. And then you see elements of kind of application virtualization, which is where NFV kind of found its, you know, kind of, you know, position. You see elements of both of them beginning to figure uh, in software-defined WAN. So lots of interest from, you know, clearly from enterprise, but those are, you know, kind of the main drivers behind it. I mean, if you look at the, you know, the classic architecture here, guys, the, the current position, you know, the classic MPLS IP VPN network, great performance, great quality of service, SLA bound. That's why you know, tons of people invested in it because it gave them the chance to deliver a managed service to an end enterprise and effectively sell them an SLA because that's ultimately what you've sold them is an SLA, a service level agreement to the enterprise. But you could argue it comes at a high cost per megabit. Um, and often it's not particularly quick to deliver. It takes time to roll out, it takes time to deploy, and you know, the more agile enterprises want things, waiting for three months or for six months to a new branch to be connected is probably too long. So again, that's part of the, you know, the, kind of the pros and the cons, if you wish, uh, of the current MPLS IP VPN service. And you would argue that most have some form of central breakout to the internet you know, in the way that most are designed. You don't normally see too much by way of internet breakout at the branch, of course some do, but most kind of centralize that. So again, you're trunking a whole heap of ent you know, internet bound traffic across an expensive VPN network to break out at a central point. Now good reason why that was done, central security, central policy control, et cetera, et cetera, but it comes at a cost. And that's again part of the debate as to why people believe as a uh, you need to see a kind of a, a different approach. Um, if you do the kind of almost like the complete opposite of a managed SLA service, then a broadband service, you know, classic, you know, low cost per megabit per second, generally quick to deploy, but there's no quas or SLA. It is by definition an internet service, so there is no quality of service, there is no SLA. But for me, looking on Facebook or whatever, then it's perfectly fine, it works. Um, of course, the piece in the middle, or the third way, the key components, if I just build this here, what SD-WAN is looking to do, guys, and I'm sure many of you have seen this, is <coughs> have a CPE that has the ability to, you know, to policy route traffic. Now, actually, I used to be a systems engineer years ago, although my hands are very soft now from stroking keyboards for 20 years. I actually used to be a, an engineer, and I remember working on Cisco IOS back in the ooh, 1990s, and you could configure policy routing. You overwrote the, uh, you know, the actual the routing protocol of choice, and you put static policy routes that said application with TCP port this, go that way. Application with TCP port this, go that way. So policy routing is not new, but it was very static and very complex in many cases, and it was specific to a box. What this does, it kind of takes that out and puts it in the hand of a central policy controller and says, you know, we can, you can change any of the thousand sites out here literally on demand. You as an end user can change it, or the carrier can change it, whatever, but you have the ability to implement you know, application level policy, uh, you know, automate that literally on the fly. So the CPE plays a key part. Uh, that central policy controller, again, is a key part of SD-WAN. And then the interesting one for me uh, is the analytics. Yeah? Actually, because you're now working at and you're now kind of in, or you're prescribing actions at an application layer, then it gives you access to a ton of analytics about what the application does, how it does it, where it does it. And as ever, when you've got insight into something, the view is there's always an opportunity to monetize it, you know, to make you know, to kind of use that information to the good of revenue. Um, now, if I uh, we go to here, so this is what people are generally opining on, on the reasons behind SD-WAN. So you get the Quas and the SLA using MPLS, um, and all of the benefits associated. You get potentially reduced cost per megabit per second because you can route some of the traffic via maybe broadband or 4G LTE if appropriate, um, faster deployment, central policy enforcement. Um, but of course, the potential downside is now you're having, if you note the little locks that appear here, because you've got direct internet access now at the branch, then of course you have to secure at the branch level. Yeah? So you're pushing security 
each, you know, into each of the branches because you've got to control and manage a public internet service at each location. So there's, of course, a distributed security, let's say, management uh, thing to be you know, to come to terms with uh, in terms of that. But that's the fundamental thing: is you secure each branch, you give the policy control down to the CPE, and then applications are routed appropriate to need, either back to the VPN or out to broadband internet. Now, to an enterprise, when they look at that, they say, okay, so I can now tell the carrier, even if it's part of a managed service, that what I want is CRM, HR, other applications that really matter to me, those are the only things I want routed onto the VPN service. Do the traffic calculations, and okay, if I'm currently taking a one gig service from you on the MPLS service, I actually only need maybe a 200 meg service in the future. The rest of the traffic, I'll take your cheapest broadband service that you can offer me, I'll hook it up to the CPE and I'll send all of the other stuff out via the internet. So that's the fundamental, one of the fundamental kind of business principles, if you like, and why enterprises are beginning to bite on this. And when I see again the RFPs that we've seen coming in, that's the fund fundamental thing they're asking for, is cost reduction by taking traffic off the VPN and routing it onto broadband internet. Yeah. And let me go to here. And then, of course, in, in all of this, though, those are some of the, again, the cost calculations. I won't go into, into detail. You have access to all of these, uh, the slides and the report. But these are the kinds of things. For a 250 branch network, the total cost of ownership shows a kind of a 50 to 60% saving over a three year period. So if you think if you're an enterprise IT CIO or who's got a you know kind of a WAN team or a network team you know under you, then if somebody brings this up and shows that to the procurement team in any you know kind of large and that's probably why the banks from what I've seen are the first to bite on this because of course the you know, typically the retail banks have hundreds if not thousands of branch locations this starts to look you know, very, very appealing to them. And they still get what they want, which is the guarantee of VPN, Quas, SLA, but they're offloading things that they don't really care about onto something that's cheaper. Yeah, so again, these are the figures, and that's why I think that, you know, the market has suddenly come from nowhere, back to that trends thing. It was kind of nothing, 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 and then suddenly it's peaked. To me, fundamentally, it's this. This is the thing that's catching the headline. You know, in a lot of uh, a lot of enterprise minds. Um, so some of the key use cases, I think I've probably touched on some of these, so I'm not going to uh, dwell on them. But again, these are the things that you know enterprises are saying, you know, will drive their interest in you know kind of new technologies or you know in the case of SD1, um, it will give me simplified traffic management, it will help you know accelerate branch deployment, it will support high bandwidth apps. So you know general statements here or you know relatively kind of high level statements. Um, but these are things that are being kind of thrown back to the, again, to the carriers. So guys, this, this is what we have to support. And our belief is if we do it with SD-WAN, of course, there's a cost saving to be made. Uh, and that puts, of course, the service providers under a little bit of pressure. And hence this kind of debate of whether it's a threat you know, or an opportunity. For those, I'm sure when you, you know, the first time you probably heard this, I'm sure many of you have heard about SD-WAN. But the first time when people kind of looked at this, I'm sure that those with major IP VPN deployments had that, you know, the gulp and the kind of the oh shit moment that this is potentially, uh, you know, a threat. For those that don't have that and are looking to enter, you know, the enterprise services market, this is like a gold dust or, gold, sorry, gold mine. Because, you know, it, you know, you saw earlier the stats that the VPN market is, you know, saturated, there's little by way of differentiation there. Suddenly somebody comes in and says, actually, we're not going to do VPN, we're just going to do SD1 and position it well, market it well, they'll see this as a, you know, as a key entry into the market. And that's what people like Ariaka and I suspect you know, the likes of Amazon and others will do in time. Um, and then in terms of options for the enterprise, and you see, why has he got a slide with Cisco on there? Just me being open, of course. Um, but you can see how enterprises will look at this. They'll look at it, can I build this myself? Do I go to an OTT player, maybe an Ariaka, there they are on the left, um, or do I go to my carrier and have it bundled with what's there? Yeah, so I'm sure on enterprise minds, in Western Europe, this will probably be less of the reality because most will tend to be looking kind of over to your right. You know, kind of, can I get this as a managed offer? Who do I go to for it? I'm sure some, you know, some that currently operate their own WAN and want to keep it that way will maybe stay here. And you can see the pros and cons 
in terms of how PwC saw this. But I think most will be looking over to the right. So again, they'll start to hit you with the same RFIs, RFPs, asking for when, how, how much can I save from this? And that's why I think it's, you know, it depends on what your, off, what your portfolio is in terms of provider as to whether you should be thinking of this, you know, beginning to plan for it. You probably already are planning for it in many cases. Or have it on the radar for discussion with a Zantaro and a Juniper as an example. Because it's something that's beginning to bubble up. And if you haven't seen this yet from enterprises and you do offer a VPN service, it's coming. Yeah, it will definitely come. Okay, um, and the view over time is, you know, the, the kind of, the, and this is why I think, again, to the point of not throwing yourself off a building, um, if, you know, if telcos and the MSPs do this right, then there's, you know, there is opportunity here. There may be some element of dollar substitution, you know, from VPN, from an MPLS VPN, sorry, into, let's call it, quote, unquote, SD-WAN. But fundamentally, there's still opportunity here, guys, because the DIY market is not going to grow that big, again, according to PwC. Um, so it depends upon your view of how proactive as an organization you are as to how much of this you grab. But the general opinion is there's plenty of opportunity still here. Yeah, again, it's not one of those, you know, throw myself off a building. Um, it really is a, you know, kind of a, an incre potentially an incremental build in terms of opportunity. Um, I've touched on most of that, guys, so in the interest of time, I'm going to come just go to here. Um, this is, again, just out of the PwC stuff. Some of the, both the concerns and the key features that you know, kind of people were talking about to them about what was required for this to be successful. So kind of the key features, as people saw, benefits of were centralized configuration, automated provisioning, end-to-end -end support. And then the key concerns, reliability, performance, and not surprisingly, security. You know, security keeps coming back up because I think, again, if you're starting to push direct internet access out to a branch level and you have to distribute security to that level, suddenly security becomes a, you know, a, a much bigger on the radar type concern than maybe it was previously. Um, but it keeps, you know, certainly security is, uh, you know, again, no surprise, but it just keeps coming back up as one of the, you know, the, kind of the key concerns in this space. So in terms of kind of strategies here, this is to the point, the, top, you know, the topic or the title, sorry, of the, the PwC document, is it a threat or is it an opportunity? And again, that's a very subjective, emotional you know, kind of comment, but you know, to those that see it as a threat, it canalizes obviously my MPLS revenue and I lose value. Um, to the, those that view it as an opportunity, it's a new revenue stream, it's improved customer value because I bring more to them, um, and it will drive some operational efficiency. 